All right, for the test, you need to know, definitely need to know the midpoint and distance formulas. Um, those are formulas that you should have memorized that you're not given. And also know these different definitions and how to use them in context. Parallel planes. Parallel planes never intersect. So I'm going to pick the top and the bottom. So to name a plane, you need three or four letters that include the top. So I'm just going to do H-A-D is parallel. That's a parallel symbol to the bottom. G-B-C. Again, I could have used other letters as well. Name two or name skew lines to A-B. So here's AB. Lines that are skewed to AB are never intersecting and on a different plane. So I'm going to use the line FC. Make sure you use line symbols. I'm going to use the line ED, line symbol again. Um, HE is skew. Or EH is the same thing. And FG is also skew. Um, DC is parallel. EF is parallel. HG is parallel. BC intersects. H AD intersects and HA intersects. And GB intersects. So I can't use those. Okay, I cleared it to draw the next one. What is the intersection of this plane? EDC. So I'm going to shade EDC, which is the front. So E, D, C, and F. Are, and then I'm also going to shade with a different color, H, A, D. So H, A, D is the top. So where the two corners come together is a line. Two planes intersect to make a line. Even though it doesn't look like a line, it's still a line. So we, we didn't do that in the quiz, so make sure you're careful that you put the line DE. And then the last one, name the left side. So shade the left side. And the left side, pick three or four of these letters and don't put any symbol above it. So it's just H, E, F. Naming opposite rays, what you do is you have a point and extend one way and extend the other way and it makes a line. So the rays that I wrote down were the rays QV with a ray over it, two letters, comma, and the ray QS. Opposite rays goes in, go in opposite directions and they have the same endpoint. And number two, give three non-collinear points. So any three points that don't lie on the same line. So separate your points with commas, P, U, T. Number one again, or down here for this diagram, name the line QS another way. So this red line, how else can I name this red line? I could name it the line QV. I could name it, um, I already did QS, but SQ. I could name it VQ. Any two points that are on this line, don't put all three. And the last one, mark up your diagram. If the measure of angle PQS... So P, Q, S is 130. So write 130 in here. Find the measure of angle S, Q, R. So S, Q, R. Well, these two have to make up a line. So they have to add up to 180 degrees by the angle addition postulate. So this needs to be 50 degrees. So this is 50 degrees because they add up to a line. And now I'm going to change color and mark VQR, angle VQR. So VQR right here is opposite of 130. It's vertical with 130. So I'm going to put 130 degrees. And these two add up to 180. Make sure you're putting degree symbols as well on your test. Every problem, see if you can mark up your diagram. So if I know that M is the midpoint of the segment, I'm going to have put tick marks on here. Those tick marks mean they're equal. 
the distance between M and B is 2x plus 1. So write 2x plus 1. The distance between M and A is 4x plus 3. So write 4x plus 3. Find the distance between A and B. So we need to find this whole distance. So if I know that this is the midpoint, these two segments are equal, I'm going to set them equal and solve for x. So by the definition of midpoint, I set them equal. Then by the subtraction property of equality, I subtract x from each side, or 2x. So I have 1 equals 2x plus 3. And then I subtract 3 from each side by the subtraction property of equality. So I have negative 2 equals 2x. And then x equals negative 1 by the division of property of equality. So it looks like I'm going to have a negative distance. Not the best numbers to pick here. but <laughs> So um, if you're taking a quiz or a test, you never want to have a negative distance. So these numbers are just, I thought I copied them from the book. or But it's not going to work. So if you plug in negative 1 to any one of these. So I'll plug in negative 1. 4 times negative 1 plus 3 is negative 1. So this is negative 1, this is negative 1. That means that the whole distance is negative 2. So my answer is negative 2. Okay, make sure you know the midpoint formula. So I wrote the midpoint formula. So I'm going to mark over in here my L is at negative 2 or negative 3, 2. And my K is at 4, 5. So to find the midpoint, you need to average the x's. So add negative 3 plus 4 and divide it by 2. And then add 5 plus 2 and divide it by 2. So the answer is negative 3 plus 4 over 2 is 1 half. And then 5 plus 2 over 2 is 7 halves. Or you can leave it as a decimal if you want. You can leave it as 0.5 and then 3.5. But make sure that you write your answer as a coordinate, an x and a y with parentheses. And I wrote the distance formula down because this means find the distance. So the distance between k and l, I have my, my x1, my y1, my x2, my y2. So I do distance equals the square root of x1, which is negative 3, minus 4, Negative 3 minus 4 is negative 7. Put that in parentheses. Squared plus 2 minus 5 is negative 3 squared. So now you have 49 plus 9. 49 plus 9 is 58. So it's the square root of 58 is the distance. This is exact. If it says approximate, you can put it in your calculator and write what it is to the nearest decimal. Make sure you can name an angle multiple ways, just like on the quiz. So if I name angle 1, it can be at angle S, K, because K is the vertex, it needs to be the middle letter. And let's say that's an L. And angle L, K, S. You couldn't call it angle K because it already this is a vertex with another angle. Next one, name adjacent angles. So adjacent angles have to have the same side. So I'm going to say angle 5 and angle 6 are adjacent. Next one, mark up your diagram. If the measure of angle TAB, so this guy right here, is 90 degrees, put that 90 symbol in, write the complementary angles. So this means that angle 5 and angle 6 are complementary. They add up to 90. These two are also complementary because I can put a 90 on the other side. So angle 3 and angle 4 are complementary as well. And then down on the bottom, name two supplementary angles. These add up to 180 degrees. They make a line. It's two angles that make a line. So I can't do um, 5 and 6 or 3 and 4. I actually have to name them with letters. So I'm going to use this big angle right here. I can't, can't say that's angle A. I have to write down this is angle RAB. That is supplementary with angle RAL. Angle RAL. Those are supplementary. There's also other pairs as well. 
angle 1 and angle 2 are complementary. So I put a note, they add up to 90 degrees. Okay, that should be buzzing in your head. Complementary adds up to 90 degrees. The measure of angle 1 is 2x plus 2, and the measure of angle 2 is 6x plus 8. Find the measure of each angle. So if they're complementary, it means that this and this adds up to 90. So the expression 2x plus 2 plus 6x plus 8 equals 90. Now I'm going to combine like terms. 8x plus 10 equals 90. Subtraction property of equality, 8x equals 80. Division property of equality, x equals 10. That's not my answer right now. I need to stop and make sure I answer the question. The question is find the measure of each angle. So now I need to plug in 10 in here. So it's 2 times 10 plus 2. So this angle is 22 degrees, which makes the other one, if it adds up to 90, this one has to be 68 degrees. Or you could plug in 10 and see that 6 times 10 plus 8 is 68. So here's my answer, and it makes sense because they both add up to 90. And last, make sure you know how to use your protractor. You may have to draw an angle. You may have to measure an angle. Make sure you know how to use your, your protractor. And mark up all your diagrams. If you're given the midpoint, um, if you're given what any angle measures are, mark them up in your diagram.